corporate development is a strategic support function. So what we do is we provide that general manager with uh, options, with uh, um, calculations of what different strategic paths would entail if um, with business models uh, of various things. So what we do really is create a build by partner plan let's say they want to grow in certain area well do you do it by building it um uh, which is what the default mode is for most businesses sure. organic growth or do you partner yeah. do you find strategic partners that can come in and accelerate your your uh, movement in that area or do you acquire someone that kind of leapfrogs basically uh even uh if something is a lot more strategic you want to basically uh acquire if you can uh, if there is a target that meets your criteria, not always exists such a target. So you kind of default to building or partnering. And who owns the funnel? So uh, I'm thinking of like a kind of a sales and marketing funnel. Um, does the, the division president is, is part of their job identifying potential partners and acquisition candidates that they kick to you to say, Taraj, can you take a look at these guys and see if they're worth exploring? Or does it work the opposite way? Do you... It's both. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's so both. Okay. It's, it's collaborative, you know. Um, <clears throat> in my experience, when it comes from the business unit itself, the chances of something happening is higher than if it's coming from the the corp dev or biz dev teams um uh because again when a corp dev and business team brings something they can't really force it through who holds the resources to actually uh bring that company in to integrate it to actually stand behind their performance uh and the deal rationale is the GM, is the is the product manager in charge of that product. So when they advocate for something, it, it's, it's a lot stronger and more resources get unlocked to make a deal happen. And that's interesting. I, yeah, that's fascinating. And so I think I know the answer to this question only by the virtue of your previous answer, but I'd love to just validate this. When a, a, a large enterprise company like a GoDaddy or any large enterprise company for that matter, and they're going to make a material acquisition, uh, that acquisition would be approved by the board, most likely. It depends on the size. Yes. Uh, if, if, if it's, it's large enough, it requires yeah. board. If it's even larger than that, it requires a shareholder approval. Got it. Okay. So, so most of the, the businesses that I think listen to the owners that listen to this podcast would be in a situation where the business unit leader would likely have to make a presentation to either the CEO or the board or both to get approval to go ahead with it. Um, take me inside that boardroom discussion. You've been there in the boardroom. You've heard the pitches. What do they say? Yes. Well, they, they want a pretty much airtight rationale for why both cash as well as attention resources <laughs> are going to be uh, given to this strategic direction, this acquisition. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. If you love today's video, then I bet you're going to absolutely love John Warlow's best selling book, Built to Sell. It's been endorsed by entrepreneurs such as Seth Godin, Bo Burlingham, Patrick Beck David, Tim Ferriss, and many more. And guess what? You can grab a free copy of this book. All you have to do is head over to builttosell.com to grab your free copy today.